Today's webinar is title is Old School versus New School Investments. Uh, old School, what I mean by that is uh, traditional endowment policies have become controversial uh, in the recent years, um, obviously because the risk involved has um, become increasingly clear. So the traditional endowment was a life insurance contract designed to pay a lump sum after a specific term um, or on death, with some policies also paying out um, in the event of critical illness. Now saying that endowments obviously over the years have evolved over time and uh, new generation endowment policies, if you want to call them that, new generation, um, now offer a greater choice of underlying investments uh, or investment uh, uh, instruments um, as well as enhanced flexibility to switch and as well as obviously not having any no early um, termination penalties. So that's what we're talking about today is um, endowment policies or endowments. Um, you can see the, the subtitle there, people are making uh, investing more difficult than it should. So this is a very simple product. I call it a wrapper, uh, but look at it as an investment vehicle. But saying it, here's a quote from Robert Kiyosaki. A lot of you guys know that I like Robert Kiyosaki as, a, as an author. He's the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But he has a quote from him. It's not how much money you make, but how much money you keep, how, it, how hard it works for you, and how many generations you keep it for. So that's the context of what I want to talk about today. So um, what is the current situation? Um, when I say current situation or current position, uh, for many people with regards to savings, uh, that's number one. And the other question is, what is the current position with regards to self-discipline when it comes to investing? And I can tell you now, it's not very, very good. So <laughs> there's a, uh, if you can call it a, um, a visual um, implication, so you can see he has a very uh, skinny uh, piggy bank. In other words, uh, I'm saying that some people are not even saving enough for retirement. Um, and that old saying is, pay, always pay yourself first. Um, Instead of paying what's uh, what's uh, or investing what's left, so uh, that uh, that's a visual thing to remember that little skinny pig. That's number one and number two. You can see the drowning pig, a drowning piggy bank. In other words, people are not watching their finances. Um, they love it. they're living above their means. Um, call it a living a champagne lifestyle on a beer income. Um, so those are the two or the, the what I say um, not enough savings. That's the one scenario. The other scenario is. Um, having easy access to savings. So you can say that break, breaking the piggy bank is having too easy access or having lack of discipline um, or self-discipline to, to your investments. And the idea of the, you can see there with the broken piggy bank is a lot of people have this what they call a short-term gratification, let's live for now. So the ideal situation you should be is having different investments with different uh, time horizons for different uh, investment outcomes or financial objectives. Okay, so what is the ideal situation? What do you want to have? Um, so here we can go look at our piggy banks again, and um, the ideal situation would be to have um, disciplined savings or different uh, disciplined investments. So South Africans are notorious for not saving enough. Yeah, endowments, in a, in a way, encourage disciplined saving because you contribute regularly uh, to build your investments over time. But also, um, you know, the investment can be used for significant cash requirements, and I'm saying this now under caution, such as university fees. Okay, with obviously everything is happening at the universities right now, but obviously with a time of a five-year uh, time horizon. So that's that's where we're looking at. They are also tax efficient. You know, the endowments offer you the the, the facility where um, they. When I say tax efficient, doesn't necessarily mean that it's tax free. Uh, tax efficiency is determined by the degree in which uh, returns on the investment are reduced as a result of tax, regardless of whom the, the tax is payable by. In other words, the less tax you pay, the more tax efficient. That's what I mean by tax efficient. Thirdly, obviously, what's nice about a, uh, having endowment, you can create a legacy. I call it a legacy. Uh, the main thing there, you can nominate uh, beneficiaries. Um, I look at it this way. I do not want to make the same mistakes that my parents made. You, know, you make money, you want to invest money, but also you want to protect the money. So that leads on to the third or the fourth thing there about estate planning. Now, for many people, it seems that they devote more time to planning their holiday or where to eat dinner than they decide who's going to inherit the estate. 
Um, so I don't know if you guys know anybody like that. Uh, but the estate plan the idea there is to protect your family and your finances after you die. Um, remember, he has a disclaimer, I'm not a financial planner, I'm not a estate planner. But the whole idea about estate planning isn't only for the rich. Okay, without a plan in place, there could be no long-term or long-lasting impact on, for your loved ones. Even if you don't have a pricey home uh, or large investment or valuable art to pass on. But the idea here is, you know, if you want your assets and your loved ones protected when you are no longer, uh, you can do it, you will need a estate plan. So obviously this is where the wills come in and things like that. I'm not pushing that right now. Uh, but without a estate plan, just understand that your heirs could face huge tax burdens and the courts can obviously designate how much your assets are, how your assets are designated or even who gets your children. <laughs> Look at it that way. Okay. So let's get into the nitty gritties. How do we get there? We're talking about endowments. Um, so we're considering obviously the new generation endowment. So, first of all, you must understand that going back, and you'll see on the next slide, endowment is a type of vehicle that often causes confusion. Okay, the common misconception is that endowment is a type of investment. No, consider it as an investment vehicle that holds underlying investment funds. So, a decision to use the endowment vehicle should primarily be used from the view of uh, tax and estate planning. Those are the reasons. Um, and not for uh, investment reasons. So who is endowment ideally uh, suitable for? It's for investors who pay income tax at a marginal tax rate of more than 30% per year. That's number one. Number two, for investors that you want to structure the estate in a more tax efficient manner. And number three, for investors that are looking for a product which requires a disciplined approach to saving. So endowments are, as I say, an after-tax investment vehicle that holds a variety of unit trust endowments. Just understand it's not a tax-free vehicle. Okay, so saying that, um, we're talking about traditional um, vehicles. You know, in the past, the old generation life uh, endowment policies, they were offered by, by, life by life companies, life insurance companies, but they had a life component and an investment component. Now, over the years, you'd, cont well, you'd contribute your contributions over the course of your, of your policy term, um, and obviously you receive life cover, and then you'll have a lump sum paid out at the end of the, of the set period. But obviously what happened is with these old policies that the, a portion of the premium would be allocated to life cover became larger and larger. Um, over time due to the increased mortality experienced uh, in the face of the, the AIDS epidemic. So as a result, endowments without life cover were later introduced to separate the life risk and the investment risk. Okay, so a new generation endowment is, inv is an investment product that offers attractive benefits to investors in higher tax brackets. So you can see here, if you had to compare uh, the differences, you know, traditional endowments were generally long-term and obviously included life and disability cover. The new generation have a minimum five-year investment period as, as to a long-term policy. And yeah, they're only focusing on investment products. Let me just get my little cursor in here. My little spotlight, investment only products. Um, in the past, traditional um, endowments were viewed as expensive. Uh, the new, policy, the new uh, endowments are more uh, competitive. Um, there's no longer any surrender or early termina termination policies. In the past, life insurance companies who should, who should generate or tell you which um, um, funds to invest in with PSG in, in, wealth endowments, you have 484 unit trust to choose from. And you can switch freely at any time without any cost. Okay, so um, that's quite uh, those are some of the major differences. Let me just get rid of my cursor. Let's get into the nitty gritties here. Yeah, so what about contributions? And this is where it gets a bit tricky when it comes to um, the endowments. How does it work? Now, you can you can choose to make a lump sum investment and regular uh, uh, debit order payments or a combination of the two. The main thing here is that you can also add a lump sum at the later stage provided it adheres to what they call the 120% rule. Now, what is this 120% rule? In this scenario now, let me just get my little cursor out here. So you can see the last, in year one, you contributed 200,000. 
120% of rural works in, it's 120% of your contribution. So next year I can contribute up to 240,000 Rand. In this scenario, we contributed 100,000. Okay, so what would be the contribution in the third year? How much would you invest in the third year? So in this scenario, to be the highest of the previous two years. So you can see uh, the highest of the two previous years was 240. So in year three, you could have uh, contributed a maximum of, of 240,000. Just understand, if this amount is exceeded, a new five-year restriction period is triggered. That's the main thing. So you're not being penalized. Just understand that a new five-year restriction period will be triggered. So you'll open up another endowment as such. Here's another scenario, example two. So in year three, we contributed only 50,000. How much would we contribute in year four? So we will calculate... 120,000 of our 50,000, in this scenario 60,000, and then look at the previous two years and see which is the highest. So in this scenario, it was 120,000. Okay, so that's how much we contribute in year four. That's a maximum we can contribute. Again, as I say, um, uh, you know, remember you're not being penalized. Should this, uh, you exceed this amount, you just start a new uh, endowment. So that's the first thing. The contributions, the 120% rule. Secondly, is what are the the limits uh, around? When I mean, we're talking about a five-year initial uh, restriction period of five years, what are the? How can I access my funds? That's what a lot of people would ask. So endowments, as I say, the PhD endowment, uh, you, you you have access to the funds, but your access is limited. But also, you can access your investment at any time after the five-year period. But within the five-year period. Um, here's an example. After three years, you just, you've, you've contributed 540,000. After year three, you decide, okay, you need to put a deposit on the house. You have two choices. You can either withdraw, okay, uh, you can con con withdraw the contributions plus 5% um, of any growth you might have got over that period. It's a, it's a one time withdrawal. Okay, so you withdraw without having to. Um, but, um, to what I'm looking for, um, um, you can withdraw without having to 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 pay it back, okay? Or you can also have a loan without having to pay it back, okay? So with the year loan, by the way, uh, you can say it's a loan or surrender. You surrender up to 80% of the value, which is in this situation, in this situation, 432,000. Um, you can withdraw that with obviously without paying any interest on that. Okay, so there's no payback period with the withdrawal and with the loan, obviously, there's no interest on that. But after year five, you can make unlimited withdrawals. So that's how it would work. Remember, you're at, um, you're either, uh, you can either or, okay, you can, with, uh, you can either withdraw or you can uh, make that loan. I hope that makes uh, sense to you guys. So, what are the benefits? What are the benefits of, of endowment? As I said just now, if you're in a higher income uh, earner um, looking for investment that will result in your you're paying less tax, as well as obviously allowing you a bit of a growth investment strategy, but where the maximum liquidity is not is not uh, essential, in other words, you can leave it for a bit longer, then endowment is just the right vehicle for you. Okay, so what are the benefits? Um, yes, we can call it six broad uh, benefits, obviously greater Tax efficiency, as I say, anybody above a marginal tax rate of 30%, uh, you'll benefit from this, number one. And but you also remember from a tax administration point of view, this is taking care of you uh, care, care on your behalf. PSG Wealth will calculate, anti-deduct, and pay the tax over to to uh, to SARS. Okay, so the uh, tax administration is all done for you. Secondly, obviously, the big advantage here, beneficiary nomination. Okay, where the beneficiary has been nominated, payment of death benefit does not depend on, on the winding up of the estate. In other words, you as or well, your beneficiaries will receive the proceeds relatively quickly. And also, uh, there's also you must, you must understand about endowment. When it comes to estate duty, okay, remember this still forms part of your estate. But saying that, the first 3.5 million of the value of your estate is exempt from state duty. But the, you, you, you still receive potential savings on executive fees up to three, nearly 4% of the fund value. Okay, so remember, it does form part of your estate, but 3.5 million, the first 3.5 million uh, is exempt from tax duty, from um, estate duty. 
Compared to other products, other uh, retirement savings products, there's no restrictions on the maximum levels of equities. Here in South Africa, you can go up 100% if you want to. You can also go offshore. There's no restrictions compared to uh, uh, living, uh, the um, retirement annuities and those kind of things. So contributions, you can make regu regular contributions, lump sums or a debit order. You also, what's nice about this product, your flexibility. You can suspend your monthly contributions as and when you want to. We call it a, a contribution holidays. What I also like about this product, um, you can make use of the endowment to draw an income upon retirement. So obviously after that five-year period has passed, um, you may um, want to with, uh, withdraw on an ad hoc basis, uh, but there's no specific intervals you have to take advantage of. Okay, There's no minimums or maximums either. Okay, so let's look at some of the other things you might be considering. Can you lose money with this product? And the answer is yes. The value of your investment is linked to the market value of the underlying instruments. Okay, so performance is not guaranteed. You must understand that. So it's important to ensure that you are comfortable with the level of, of investment risk. That's number one. And number two, will the benefits uh, be protected? No. Okay, the, the endowment is not protected about claims against your creditors or from your creditors, number one as well as from your ex-wife or ex-spouse um, if you get divorced. So just remember those two things. They, there's no protection um, around that. Okay. What about how do I, what funds are available? So you can invest in a range of investment options. I suggest if you click on that link, link there, it will take you through to this on our website. You can download the fund list. You can see the 484 funds I was talking about earlier. And let's say you can switch between these without uh, any cost, but just remember you might trigger a capital gains in that scenario. You can also click on this little link at the bottom here and it helps you to compare one fund to another fund and performance and things like that. So this is how you choose the funds for, for your endowment. Okay. And then obviously I like to recommend our PSG asset management funds. There's nine funds to choose from. Um, they have received numerous awards over the years. Um, so it's a wide range. You can see what's available there. But also, they are ca uh, cost effective. Um, if you look at the administration uh, fee, uh, ongoing on, uh, 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 administration fee, 0.2%. Um, other funds, 0.5%. Uh, That's up to 1.5 million. And then it works on a sliding scale. So uh, using PSG funds, just understand you are saving some money there. Okay. Contributions I mentioned just now. Uh, lump sums, the minimum is 20,000, but also the regular, the uh, debit order, you can have a minimum of 500 rand monthly, or you can do it on a quarterly basis, or, or your half yearly, or annually. Okay, so you can make a combination of them, so that they're very flexible. Just understand that, so nice thing about the uh, endowments. Okay, so I hope I've answered a lot of your questions, so let me see what questions you guys do have. Okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay, Milan, um, you'll have to ask your answer. Milan's question here is how, how or where do I find an account or tax person that would generally care about my affairs? And it's the same like uh, choosing a lawyer or choosing a dentist. Ask your friends for referrals. I think that's the best thing. Um, yeah. If your friends don't answer, you go to social media. Milan, but uh, go, go, pick it back on other people's experience. That's what I would suggest you guys do. Okay, let's see what other questions we come, that's coming through here. Look like has all the questions, guys. Okay, awesome. Okay, so let's wrap it up quickly. In conclusion, what I want you to gain from this, this presentation today, remember the endowments offer attractive tax benefits for people in higher tax brackets, number one. You can nominate beneficiaries and obviously you can save on executive fees. Just understand there is an initial re uh, restriction period of five years, but you can still make, you still have access to your funds. You can make one loan or you can make one withdrawal. Okay, so those are the things about endowments. But if you want more information, go to our website and go register or go, go click on the little link to give you some more information on what, what this product is all about. 
as I said, right in the beginning, the, the PDF as well as the recording of the presentation will be sent out to you guys. Okay. So just quickly before I wrap it up, um, next week we're talking about how secure is your financial future. So you can see my calendar coming up until the until the rest of the year, until the end of, end of December or middle of December if we all go on holiday. So some uh, some interesting topics coming up. You go to our website and go register for the upcoming webinars. Guys, from my side, thank you very much for, for participating, for being on this webinar. There's my email address. If, you got, if you've got any questions, you're welcome to drop me an email. But uh, from my side, thank you very much for being on here. Until next week, all the best. Bye for now.